Thank you very much. It's um, my pleasure to be here at Cato. And um, so I released this book, Debunking Utopia, Exposing the Myth of Nordic Socialism, officially yesterday. Now it's uh, within its categories. Um, two of the categories of Amazon is uh, right now number one bestseller. So it's you know fun and it's getting a, quite a lot of media. The background for this book, because this book is published through WND and it's written for a US audience. It's getting some international um, attention like in India and Norway and these countries, but this is for an American audience. The thing is, I've been writing on this subject for quite some time. And last year, I, I wrote uh, this book, Scandinavian Unexceptionalism, Culture, Markets, and the Failure of Terror Socialism. And it's been very big internationally. Like in my home country, Iran is big. In Latin America, it's big. Parts of it and all of it have been translated to, as far as I know, French, German, Spanish, Polish, maybe Hungarian, Korean, Farsi. And we got a Japanese translation request recently. And why? I mean, why do they care about Nordic countries? No, no offense. We are, we are very <laughs> fascinating countries, I'm sure. But wh why, why do everybody care? Because the left, intellectual left, is using the Nordic uh, countries as a role model for socialism. And in doing that in a way that's kind of not really in tune with Nordic politics. The Danish prime minister came to Harvard and at the end of last year, and he said, stop saying Denmark is socialist. We're not socialist. We're a market economy. But the left internationally is using a perception of Nordic countries to sell the idea that socialism works. And their main ideological case for the left currently is the Nordic countries. Now, this is international which is why the Spanish version of my book is getting a lot of traction in Latin America currently. But very much in the US, very much among the Democrats. And uh, let me just give you a quote from Bernie Sanders. In a debate with Hillary Clinton, in one of the first debates, he said, I think we should look to countries like Denmark, like Sweden and Norway, and learn from what they've accomplished for the working people. And the team of Bernie Sanders clearly is that America should become democratic socialist, and that the role model number one is Denmark, and then the, all the other Nordic countries. Now, you might think this is just Bernie Sanders. He's a super leftist in American politics. He would be a leftist even in Sweden and Denmark, by the way. But uh, Ezra Klein, editor of Vox, explains, Clinton and Sanders both want to make America look a lot more like Denmark they both want to pass generous parental leave policies, let the government bargain down drug prices, and strengthen the social safety net. Klein says the difference is not whether, I mean, both of them want a Danish welfare model. Now, Obama recently invited all the Nordic uh, prime ministers to Washington, D.C. And again, it was very clear. He said, you know, why shouldn't, shouldn't we put the Nordic countries in charge of the world? His ideal society very much is the Nordics. And Bill Clinton is very clear, like if you read his book, Back to Work, that he believes that Nordic countries have a superior social model. Now, I think there's, it makes sense to admire the Nordic countries. It makes a lot of sense. Why does it make so much sense? Because the Nordic countries are undeniably very successful. They have a high living standard. Not quite as high as the United States, but high enough. And they have very good social outcomes. Low levels of poverty. They have long lifespans. And they rank a lot of international tables on women's rights, on you know, ha happiness. Not happiness, actually measuring happiness, because you know, they're not ha they're, Nordic culture is not about being happy. We don't get enough sunshine for that. But you know, uh, good, uh, good lives, good lives index. A lot of indexes have Nordic countries on top. But what is the reason? Is the reason for Nordic social success democratic socialism? All right, so I'll just go through this categorically. If you, uh, you know, buy the book, it's selling well. It's full of arguments and research about the limits of, of politics 
and the importance of deeper cultural institutions for social success. Now, but let's go through this. Nordic countries, uh, some say, are prosperous because social democracy. That's what Bernie Sanders would say. He said, look, social democracy makes them innovative because, you know, uh, you know there's a safety net, you take risks. That's the big argument. So, what? <laughs> so let's look at Nordic prosperity. You know what? The, the, the question, why are Nordic countries so prosperous, is not a new question. In 1943, Irish historian James Betty asked, why is Denmark 50% richer than Ireland? Already many, many years ago, this was an intriguing question. And he had a good point. Because at the time, Ireland and Denmark were very similar countries. They were agricultural economies. They had free markets and were exporting to the UK. But the thing was, Ireland had everything that mattered then, a bigger population, they had coal and other natural resources, which in early industrialization was super important. They had better soil, more sunshine, more rain. And you know, when the economy was about uh, producing milk, that was very important. So why were the Irish so much less affluent than the Danes? And the answer that James Betty gave many, many decades ago and that a, a, another Irish uh, researcher recently has written much more about is simply free markets, social cohesion, and peace. Now, Ireland also had free markets, but the free market system in Ireland was imposed by British imperialism. The Danish had embraced free market policies, and at the time, they had super free markets at the time. And they had a lot of social cohesion, Nordic countries, have throughout their history had unique social cohesion, uniquely high levels of social trust, and uh, Nord uh, Nordic Americans have the highest trust in America. No group has as much trust, and have even more trust than their cousins in Nordics. And peace, of course. Nordic countries stayed out of the world wars, and they had that going for them, and they've had peace for hundreds of years, really. So, that's the root of Nordic prosperity. I write much more about this in my book, but let me just give you a brief fact. Some people say that, no, no, Nordic prosperity is because of social democracy. Just here are the facts. In Sweden, uh, in the period before social democrats uh, were in government, Sweden had the highest growth rate in the industrialized world. Whereas in the period after social democrats started dominating Swedish politics, it was mediocre growth rate. Denmark similarly had a very high growth rate before the social democrat period and slower growth rate after the social democrat period. And I wrote a lot about these things in my book. The fact is if you break it down, it's much, much more uh, striking because part of the social democrat period was free market period anyway. But the part when they tried to introduce socialism was stagnation, you know, jobs destroyed, entrepreneurship stopped. So if you really understand Nordic um, society, is that they have a unique culture, social cohesion, working ethics, et cetera, that makes their economies very, be very well functioning. But you know, high taxes, government involvement in the economy doesn't work there. It works as little there as it works here. Ah, but you might say, democratic socialism is not about creating wealth mainly, it is about employment. It is about government saying we should have full employment, everybody should have a job. Okay, let's look at job creation. I'm going to show you a graph here. Now, this graph is Swedish job growth during the Great Depression. Now, we all remember, we have an image of the Great Depression, we don't remember it, I mean, we're not that old. But it's, you know, people are waiting in a line to get bread, mass unemployment, no growth happening, jobs don't come back. But that image is of the American Great Depression, not in the Nordic Great Depression. Because the Nordic countries were these trade dependent economies, they were hurt massively by the Great Depression. First, the global market crashes, then a lot of countries set up trade barriers in a misguided attempt to you know, kind of protect their own economies. So the Nordics were hit by the Great Depression and the bad policies that followed it. But the Nordic countries never had a new deal. Government didn't say we'll step up and fix it. 
Nordic countries had largely a losses fair approach to the Great Depression. Does Bernie Sanders know this? Probably not. And look at job growth in Sweden. Now, it goes down during the Great Depression, but rapidly jobs are being created. Many of Sweden's most successful companies, like Dolph Gordes, Saab, Automobile, et cetera, are created in the Great Depression or the years after it. So entrepreneurship and free markets creates massive economic growth, just pulls these countries out of, out of the Great Depression. And a similar thing we find for the other Nord Nordic countries. So you see this and you say, wow, Sweden is super good at creating jobs, right? Even through the biggest crisis in modern history. I'm going to show you an, another crisis, the crisis in the 1990s. Now, Sweden had a local economic crisis in a time when a global economy was rapidly growing, in a time when Sweden, a trade-dependent country, was just selling and selling and selling goods and services to the global market. So you would think that a 1990s crisis would rapidly pass over. Well, here's job growth in the 1990s crisis. Jobs disappear, and they very slowly recover. This is not a Great Depression. It's a minor Swedish crisis. The crisis in terms of economy is just very rapidly over, really, because, jobs are, because you know, growth is happening, but it's jobless growth. And the Swedish population is rising rapidly here. Uh, a lot of immigration happening, a lot of Swedish families having children. And also, the government is pumping in government jobs, government subsidized jobs. Still, look at how slow it goes. The number of jobs is back on track in 2008, when, of course, the next crisis is with them. So what happened? Well, I mean, here, Sweden is a low tax country strong incentives to work, one of the freest markets on the world, freer market than the US at the time, much freer markets than the US at the time. Here, I mean a different system, a high tax system. So the, what does the data tell us? Well, job creation worked better during the free market era than today. And it worked phenomenally good during the free market era. Arguably, the United States could have learned from Sweden. Instead of a new deal, you should have had Swedish politics. But then you say, come on, that's not the point. Maybe jobs, OK, the free market system in Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Finland, was better at creating jobs and prosperity. That's the good things about capitalism. But that's not what Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, Bill Clinton are after. They want the social good of Nordic countries. A common thing I hear is about lifespan. So for example, National Public Radio, uh, ran a story, says, look, Danes have, you know, socialized health care, a lot of government support if you're sick, all of that. They have the highest taxes in the world, the most generous welfare state on the planet. And you know what? Danes, did you know that Danes live one and a half years longer than Americans? Now, isn't that a good trade-off? We have big taxes, we have democratic socialism, but we live one and a half years longer. Look, come on. That's, all of that is true, but the link isn't true. What I show in Debunking Utopia is in 1960, Denmark had lower taxes than the US at the time. Even the US at the time, Denmark had lower taxes in 1960. It was a small government system. In 1960, Danes lived 2.4 years longer than Americans. The gap was wider. It's not only Denmark. All the Nordic countries had a wider gap in lifespan compared to America before the introduction of the big welfare state. You know, buy the book, read the book, full of facts. Another interesting fact is, which is a Nordic country with the longest lifespan? You know? Iceland. Ah, good. I, I, I thought he wouldn't know. Maybe you would know. Smart guy. Iceland? Of course, it's the good climate of Iceland. It's called Iceland. They're living on ice. Cold kills people. Have you seen Iceland? You know, Iceland looks like Mordor from the Lord of the Rings. It's a barren, volcanic, cold, desolate place. OK, but there's a bunch of Vikings living on ice. What is their culture? They take hikes in this barren climate. They eat fish. They go fishing for whale. Of course, they live long lives. They don't eat as much sugar as Americans do. 
I mean, not you guys eating lunch. You, you, you're doing terrific. And the Danes, the Danes have the highest tax rate, and the Icelandic have the smallest welfare state in Nordics, historically. The Danes have the biggest welfare state on the planet, arguably, in terms of uh, tax revenue, you know, biggest government. They have the shortest lifespan in Nordics. Now, I know some uh, libertarians would say, no, no, come on, this proves that because they have socialized medicine, they're like, I'll drink more alcohol and smoke more, government will take the bill. I don't buy that. I think that's you know, overstating the case. It's their culture. The Danes are the fun-loving people of the Nordics. They drink alcohol, they smoke cigarettes, or joints, or whatever they do, and they live shorter lives. Culture explains the long life expectancy of Nordic countries, not policies. Now, of course, policies do have an effect, but you know, when, when the people, Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, they think Americans will live longer if you have Nordic style democratic socialism, the evidence actually isn't suggesting that. It's almost suggesting the other thing. I'm not saying that, that introducing democratic socialism in America would lower the lifespan. I don't know that. But believing that America will become Iceland or Denmark or Sweden if we introduce those policies is missing the entire picture. It is the culture that creates this. And during the free market era, Nordic countries were, were uh, more ahead of the rest of the world in terms of lifespan, low child mortality than today. So their social success was even more evident before the transition from a small welfare state to a big welfare state. That you should, you know, if you, if you buy this book, remember that argument. It's a fairly new argument. It's a very strong argument. But at least equality. At least equality surely resulted from social democracy. There's a case, obviously, to be made, made from that. If I tax the rich, you, you look like you're a rich guy. You have a suit on. And give to those who don't have you know, ties on. I'm sure he has less money. <laughs> obviously, I'm creating income equality by doing that. You know, tax the rich drop them, raise the people with lower incomes. But the thing is, if you look at the research in Nordic countries, you know what? Nordic countries became equal before they introduced high taxes and a big government. And it's not my opinion, it's the research. So like Roina and Wallenstrom showed that the, uh, the top income shares in Sweden were already lower than other countries. Most of the decrease in equality takes place before the expansion of the welfare state. And there's research in, for Denmark and Norway similarly showing this. But most importantly, why the hell are the Nordic countries so equal? Let's forget about socialist ideas, libertarian ideas. Let's just look at the facts. Here, are the, here is uh, the list of Gini coefficients. These are the most equal countries on, in, um, in the modern world. Iceland on, on top is a Nordic country. Slovenia, Norway is a Nordic country. Denmark is a Nordic country. Finland and Sweden. Nordic countries are on top. But wait a second, it's not only the Nordic countries. Slovenia is not a Nordic country. Czech Republic and Slovak Republic are not Nordic countries, first of all. Now, what does these three countries, Slovenia, Czech Republic, and Slovak Republic, have in common with Nordic countries? Are they social democracies? No. They are former communist countries that today have small public sectors, kind of flat taxes, kind of the opposite to social democracy, kind of. But they have one thing in common. They have homogeneous populations. One big group in the population. Contrary to the US, there's a melting pot. One big group in the population. Obviously, countries which have one big group in the population have more income equality. Because much of income differences are between different groups. Now, you must be completely blind if you don't see it. You just walk in society. So if you just strip away political ideology, countries with homogeneous populations have equal income distributions. The homogeneous Nordic countries during a time when they had minimal welfare states uh, and very free market policies developed income equality and then they introduced the big welfare state. Iceland is on top. Iceland, a Nordic country which historically has had the least welfare state, has the highest income equality. Are you shocked by this? I'm not. Because they are the most homogeneous Nordic country. They are Vikings. And you know, Iceland is full of libertarians, by the way. Maybe you know that, no? No, you didn't. And Slovenia also, they're a homogeneous country. 
And Sweden, which has become less homogenous because people like me, immigrants, have come, has the lowest income equality in Nordic countries. Again, the driver here is mainly how homogenous a society is. Now, maybe social democracy made them more uh, equal. But then again, it also trapped families like mine in welfare dependency. So even equality is not this simple case. We'll introduce Nordic style economic policies. We'll get Nordic equality. No, you won't. Because the US is a super mixed country. You're not a super homogenous country. If, if the US only had Iceland, if you just separate Icelandic Americans and Danish Americans, if you only look at them, then the US is a super equal country. So I mean, this is important to realize. The idealization of Nordic countries is because of the cultural, societal attributes, not because of the policies, mainly. And once you look at it, the case for adopting Nordic style democratic socialism crumbles. Now, what happens if you look at Nordic Americans? And there are like 12 million Nordic Americans. In Sweden, the poor people left Sweden. Those who didn't have land, those who were starving. So you would think that their ancestors are doing worse than the Swedes? You might think that. That's not the case. In my book, and this is getting a lot of attention, I think Bloomberg ran a story about this. Chicago Tribune uh, is running a thing about it today, is that look at the per capita income of these groups, like Danish Americans, Swedish Americans, Scandinavian Americans, etc. I find that when you compare apples with apples, Nordic Americans have 50% higher prosperity than their cousins in Nordics. The only exception in Nor Norway, where Norwegian Americans just have slightly higher incomes. But that is amazing, because the Norwegians are drowning in oil. Right? Norwegian Americans still have more money than their cousins. So when you compare apples with apples, you find that there's a big difference in favor of the Nordic Americans. Now, I would love to have five minutes with Bernie Sanders and explain to him that the social success is also in favor of Nordic Americans. The high school graduation rates of Nordic Americans, look at it. It's like just a few percent, like 3% who are not graduating high school. In Nordic countries, you have like 25%, 20% not graduating high school. High school dropout rates much higher among the Nordics than their cousins in America. Unemployment rate is a half almost in Nordic countries compared, no, among Nordic Americans compared to Nordics. Norway is the exception, but they have massive hidden unemployment. So the statistics is kind of, you know, uh, not true. Um, and poverty rate. The Danish poverty rate based on US, US measures is 6.7%. Now, that's lower than the US poverty rate, which is 11% in the US. You know what? Danish Americans have a poverty rate of 4.2%, much lower than their cousins. Swedes have a 9.3% poverty rate according to a US measure of poverty. Swedish Americans have almost half of that. Finland, 15%, which is funny. This is even higher than the US poverty rate, 11. Finnish Americans have a third of that poverty level. So what happens to the case for the left, their ideal societies, let's be Nordic societies? We already have Nordic success among Nordic Americans. Now, my last point is that the Nordic welfare states are based on this super strong Protestant Nordic style working ethics, responsibility ethics. But over time, the policies have been eroding responsibility working ethics. And I'm not saying this as an argument. I have a ton. A ton of research which clearly shows this in this book. And I think that's the most exciting part because I grew up in a welfare family and experienced it firsthand. So, so for example, Hunra Dubdal says, much evidence suggests that the welfare states also have a very costly and long-lasting effect on the working ethics of, of Danes. And I find research in Denmark, Sweden, Norway really confirming this idea that too generous welfare actually hurts the poor. Of course, some welfare helps the poor, but too much generous welfare actually hurts them, without any doubt. This is very good empirical research. So what's happening? Nordic countries are moving towards a new model. I'm going to show you something from Denmark. Now, Denmark is a favorite country of the American left, right? Because Sweden used to be, but then we cut the taxes. 
and made a welfare much less generous. This is my last slide. Denmark currently has a centre-right government, and their prime minister came to the US and said, stop saying we're socialist. Before then, they had a social democrat government. You know what a social democrat government in Denmark, their favoured countries of the American left did? They started a nationwide debate about the need to have a new welfare contract. The Danish Social Democrats, while in power, said, we can't have this anymore. We can't have this over-reliance on welfare. We can't have this system where the incentives of work are so limited. Their uh, Corridan, their uh, Minister of Finance said, the competition state is a new welfare state. Much more individual responsibility. So that's the debate the Danish Social Democrats are having because they live in the reality of Nordic countries. And the reality is very simple. It's a super culture of success mixed with some good policies, but also some policies which are not perhaps the best in the world. And for the American left and the international left to admire Nordic policies, they're fooling you. They're actually pointing to the Nordic culture of success. And if you want a Nordic culture of success, you should have policies which encourage individual responsibility, not policies that says government will take care of everything. Thank you.